All right, welcome. We're ready to get started setting up your Zero account. To uh, open up an account with Zero, I'm at uh, zero.com, and I'm gonna go ahead and click the free trial. Being that you're a end user, you're gonna go ahead and set up a free trial to start. You'll get 30 days free. Um, you'll go ahead and enter your uh, details, of course, and um, I'm obviously not going to uh, go through a free trial right here, but um, you go ahead and agree to the terms and service, click get started. Uh, immediately you're going to get a confirmation email and uh, you're going to go ahead and click that link in the email to set up your account and I'm going to go flip over and speed pass up all that and I'll show you what it's actually going to look like on your end. So this here will show you, uh, this is uh, actually the kind of the accountant's view, um, but it's incredibly similar to the end user's view if you were setting yourself up. So um, let's just say you're going to be um, Amazon Seller 1 Inc. That's your name. Go ahead and copy that. Let's go ahead and start a trial here. And uh, you can initially see some uh, setup videos to help you guide through the process. Um, but that's what we're, I'm here for, so I'm going to just blow past this. And uh, fortunately, you're going to see here at the top uh, kind of a status bar, and it shows you just uh, how far we have to go, which is nice. So let's say uh, we have our name here, it flows through, and uh, you're going to pick your type. Generally, if you have an LLC, I'll pick corporation here. Um, obviously, the organization type isn't incredibly important. Um, there's just a few features on the back end that you probably won't even, won't even use too often. So um, don't stress over that. If you're an LLC, put a corporation. For, account, for uh, Amazon sellers, I generally uh, recommend uh, e-commerce. Go ahead and uh, type in your address, 123 Easy Street. We'll call this New York, New York. I don't even know what the zip code in New York is. Just go ahead and put my uh, local zip code. Uh, I generally skip the social links, not too, too important. Uh, this, is j this is for uh, creating online invoices to send to customers. Um, you won't even really be doing very much of that or any of that as long as you have uh, you remain just an, an FBA seller. So uh, generally for service companies. So go ahead and click next here. Here we're going to enter some of our financial settings. Uh, unless you, when you incorporated, you made any kind of um, edits to your fiscal or financial year. Um, Pretty much everybody defaults to December 31st, and uh, you'd have to intentionally change that for it to be different. Um, on the uh, sales tax, uh, at this time, Zero doesn't really manage sales tax well, so I recommend actually leaving all this blank here. Um, for tax defaults, I recommend leaving that just as it is. Under a time zone, go ahead and uh, use your time zone, being that we're in... Uh, you know, New York, I'm going to go ahead and use the Eastern time. We'll move along. Invoice settings. Unless you're a service-based company, you're going to be in invoicing certain clients for consulting or services performed. Go ahead and skip this step. Here we're going to have the opportunity to invite a user. Um, Let's say you're working with an accountant or bookkeeper. Here's a good time to go ahead and invite them. But let's just say you're going to take the full do-it-yourself route and not invite anyone in. We're going to go ahead and skip this step. You can always invite someone in later um, if you change your mind or something comes up. So here we have the opportunity to add a foreign currency. Um, 99 times out of 100, you most likely won't be having a foreign currency, um, dealing in a foreign currency. So uh, 
The only chance this would really change is uh, if you go ahead and start selling um, via Amazon's international marketplaces, whether in Canada or the UK. If you do so, um, you can add a currency here. Just know that um, the standard zero plan is $30. As soon as you go um, foreign currency or multi-currency, as they call it, um, it's going to bump up your plan to like the premium option at 70 bucks a month, at least at the time of this recording. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip that, assuming we're a completely U.S.-based seller. It's going to define tax rates. Right now, Zero is uh, it's a global software, so tax is a little bit more applicable in other countries than it is here in the U.S. I generally leave all the tax rates zero and just move right along. And here's where we're going to start doing most of the uh, editing. And uh, so um, it's going to ask us on our chart of accounts, how do we want to handle this? Zero has a default chart of accounts, um, or you can also import one. So um, as an explanation, your chart of accounts is a list of all the accounts used to code your transactions. And so, in other words, that means these are all the different categories. You can categorize revenues, expenses, assets, liabilities. These are all the name, like office expenses or automobile expenses, etc. So you absolutely have the opportunity to use a default or you can import your own. Um, for our purposes, we're going to import from a file. And uh, I've included in the course documents a uh, a Excel CSV file to import and uh, this is uh, this file that we're going to import is specifically created with an Amazon seller in mind so it's going to ask us um, this is the only option here but does the file you're importing contain account balances we're going to just go ahead and say no we don't know I'll browse uh, my desktop here we have an Amazon chart of accounts. I'm going to go ahead and click open and then import. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, click confirm here. Just letting us know uh, that we've imported. Generally don't do anything on this page. But uh, what you're going to see here is they want us to confirm our bank and credit card accounts. So here you're going to see a list. Uh, it's going to look like this exactly for you. And it's going to ask you what type of accounts are these. So um, really you're just going to base these off the name. So we have an option for bank, credit card, PayPal, or current asset. So uh, for the checking account, we're just going to go ahead and call all of these bank. For the PayPal, we're going to identify as PayPal. And for the credit card, we're going to identify these as credit card accounts. And each of these have a few different specific features, which is why Zero asks you to identify these. And you're going to notice um, where the country, the currency, and account number. I go ahead and leave these all as default. Um, we can come back for the account numbers later. And now we've saved. It's going to uh, give us an overview to confirm that these are the chart of accounts that we want. And uh, I'm not going to walk through all these. I'm just going to go all the way to the bottom and discuss these in more detail later. I'm going to go ahead and click Next to confirm. And now the all-important conversion date. So this is very, very important and uh, very vital that you pick a proper date here. So. Zero says, enter the date that you intend to begin processing all of your transactions in Zero. Um, and what they say is it's easiest to set your conversion date to be the start of a sales tax period. And there's going to be a link for giving you tips on choosing a conversion date. At the time of this recording, uh, we're in September 2015, so it's going to default to the current month. And what this means is... Uh, we're, if we leave this as is, that means we're going to start processing transactions in zero as of today's date, uh, or I should say as, as of the month of September, the current month. 
What I recommend doing here is, if at all possible, pick the, the beginning of the year. So pick January 2015. Let's say you started your FBA business here in March of 2015 and you're just now getting around to setting up an accounting system. I'd say go ahead and set it up as of January anyways. Um, the, the one difference would be, let's say you're coming from an existing accounting software and uh, maybe you're using QuickBooks before and you may have everything current in QuickBooks as of last month, so August. And so it may make sense to put September 2015 as your conversion date. So um, whatever the case, pick, pick the month where you know that you are going pick the month after you know you have the, the most current information. So if the most current information you have from your accounting software is December of last year, go ahead and pick January of this year. Um, if you don't have anything and maybe you're a brand new business, I'd say just go ahead and start from the beginning of the year and, uh, and you'll be just fine. So we'll click next here and it's going to ask us to confirm our account balances as of the um, the start date. So I picked January of 2015. So it's going to ask us what were your balances and primarily your cash accounts. What were your balances as of the day before you started processing things in zero? Your conversion date. For this example, I'm gonna uh, for our training here. We're gonna leave this all at zero. I'm actually going to come back because this is a pretty nuanced uh, situation. It could be different for different situations. I'm going to go ahead and suggest you leave it all as zero, and we're going to go ahead and come back to this later in our training. Now that we've passed through this, setup is complete. You're nearly done. Just click finish to start using zero for your day-to-day -day business. Okay, we're going to go ahead and click zero, we're going to click finish, and I'll see you on the other side.